Hello YouTube and welcome to Cy Prime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. So, if you're just joining us, I'm currently putting out videos talking about the Starfinder role-playing game, a tabletop role-playing game put out by Paizo, the same people that make Pathfinder. My hope is to put out a series of videos explaining Starfinder lore in order to help people prepare for the upcoming Starfinder 2nd Edition playtest coming out August 2024. If you missed it, I put out a part one video talking about some of the Starfinder basics, uh, link in the description below. I do suggest you watch it as concepts from that video will be used in this video. It's only like six minutes long. Today, we're going to move on from the basics and talk about the four major factions or powers in Starfinder. Now, as a reminder, Starfinder is a science fantasy game set in outer space. That means that there are starships and laser guns, but also magic, so just remember that. Now, there are a lot of minor to moderate range factions in Starfinder, but today I'm only going to cover the big ones, or at least the ones that I see having the biggest impact on the story. So the first major power we're going to talk about today is the Vescarium. The Vescarium is an Imperium made up primarily of the alien species the Vesk. Vesk, Imperium, Vescarium, you get it. Shortly after the Gap ended, the Vescarium had conquered their whole star system, which had included several other planets with intelligent life. These aliens were then forcibly brought into the Vescarium as a sort of second-class citizens. They aren't slaves, but they also aren't reaching the highest echelons of Vescarium society, that's for sure. The Vesk are a lot like the Klingons from Star Trek, only lizard people. As a whole, their culture tends to love conquest, war, and gaining glory on the battlefield. Their culture is centered around, essentially, a military dictatorship bureaucracy. In fact, the iconic Vesk in Starfinder actually left the Vescarium when her prospects of gaining honorable glory in combat dried up due to nepotism and bureaucracy. Now, something interesting happened with the Vesk and Starfinder's faster-than-light travel system, the Drift Drive. If you recall from last time, Triune, the god of machines, divinely inspired engineers across the galaxy to make drift engines. Now, the inspiration may have been divine, but drift drive technology is just that, technology. Anyone with a degree of engineering know-how and the plans can make a drift drive. But for some reason, no Vesk nor any other subjugated citizens got the plans from Triune for a drift drive. So the Vesk were kind of stuck in their own star system without faster-than-light travel eh, for a while. Around 25-ish years after the Gap ended, explorers from the Galarian star system, that's the system that used to have Galarian in it, landed on the Vesk homeworld. They were happy to meet another sentient species and wanted to open up trade. The Vesk military, of course, promptly unalived the whole crew and reverse-engineered the drift drive and, well, now Vesk have faster-than-light travel. So, the Vesk immediately start colonizing other star systems. What they really wanted, though, was to take over the Galarian system. Remember, the Star Stone at the heart of Absalom Station, which is in the Galarian system, allows for super easy and fast travel there. It's never stated outright, but I suspect that's why the Vescarium wanted to conquer the Galarian system. That space station would be a huge logistical boon for their military. Anyway, the Vescarium attacked the world of Triaxis, which is also in the Galarian system, probably to get a foothold, but were driven off by the Triaxis military, and it is here where we get our second major faction. After the attack on Triaxis, several planets in the Galarian system realized that they couldn't defend themselves against the combined might of the entire Vescarium, so they entered a sort of mutual defense pact. Eventually, all major governments in the Galarian system voluntarily joined because, well, no single world could stand up to the might of the Vescarium. This is the birth of the Pact Worlds. The Pact Worlds, the second major faction, started off as just the governments from within the Galarian system, but has expanded to include other planets as well. 
Think of the Pact Worlds organization as a sort of Galarian system, United Nations. Each planet is allowed to self-govern largely, but the Pact Worlds Council is there to mediate disputes and coordinate defenses should the entire star system be threatened. So, the Vescarium and the Pact Worlds go to war for nearly 250 years, but it's not a big bloody war. In fact, it was called the Silent War because most people didn't see much of it. Instead, it was mostly just border skirmishes and such, both sides probing each other for weaknesses but never really gaining a clear foothold in each other's territory. Enter our third major faction, the Swarm. 291 years after the gap ended, the Swarm simultaneously attacked both the Vescarium and the Pact Worlds. The Swarm are essentially the bugs from Starship Troopers if the bugs could launch themselves into space with bug carrier ships and use weird pseudo-divine psychic energy to go faster than the speed of light. The Swarm are locusts, devouring the resources of a whole planet before moving on to the next planet. Now, the Vesk may be conquest-driven, but they aren't stupid. They realized that if the Pact Worlds fell to the Swarm, there would be nothing left for them, and the Swarm getting the Starstone would also probably be bad news. They also realized that fighting a war on two fronts is a terrible idea. And the Pact Worlds realized much the same. So the Vescarium and the Pact Worlds signed an armistice and agreed to help each other out until such a time as the Swarm was no longer a threat. And with the two aiding each other, yeah, they both managed to beat back their component of the Swarm. I cannot understate how big of a deal this was. The Swarm has been defeated three times as far as we know, and defeats one and two were at the hands of the Vescarium and the Pact Worlds. After the Swarm was beaten back, though, the Armistice held. After all, the Vescarium and the Pact Worlds hadn't destroyed the Swarm, it was still out there and still a threat. Plus, and again, this goes unstated, I think a lot of Vesk came to enjoy the freedom of the Pact Worlds. Not being forced under military dictatorship appealed to a certain minority of Vesk. I think Star Trek put it best. And the tribunal was a forum for the truth and not a tool for the warrior class. There are other classes? You didn't believe all Klingons were soldiers. I guess I did. Uh... So, many Vesk migrated to the Pact Worlds, and now it's in the Vescarium's best interest to trade with the Pact Worlds, as starting a war with an organization that contains their own people would probably not play well at home. So, moving on to the fourth and final major faction, the Aslanti Star Empire. So, if you've heard the term Aslanti before, it's likely from Pathfinder, not Starfinder. The story of the Aslanti is long and complicated, but here are the bits you need to know for now. Back before the Gap, 10,000 years before the time of even Pathfinder, there was an island called Aslant. Aslant was kind of like the Atlantis of Starfinder, an island filled with humans who had super advanced magic and technology and egos to match. Now, at some point, a giant meteor hit the island sinking it. There's a whole story that I won't get into involving Cthulian nightmare fish. We're just going to move on. Anyway, sometime before that meteor hit, several Aslanti created a super powerful magical portal that transported them to another planet in another star system, which they then colonized. Anyway, with their home island destroyed, the Aslanti on this new planet started spreading out and conquering. They eventually developed space travel and began conquering other planets. There's no nice way to say this. The Aslanti Star Empire are space fascists. I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm not trying to inject real-world politics into here. The Aslanti Star Empire meets the literal definition of fascism. They are an extremely authoritarian regime centered around the ideology that Aslanti humans, specifically Aslanti humans, are superior to all other forms of intelligent life. In Star Trek terms, if the Vescarium are the Klingons, the Aslanti are the Dominion. They seem to believe that it is their divine right and duty to conquer all other sentient species and bring them to heal. The Alpha Quadrant seems racked with chaos. It could use some order. The aliens they conquer live as not even second, but third class citizens in the Empire. Now, we haven't gotten to see too good a look at the inner workings of the Aslanti Empire just 
one part of one adventure path, but from what we've seen, the propaganda brainwashing in their empire is widespread and near total. And that's it. Those are the four main factions or powers in Starfinder. Now, there are a lot of factions I didn't get into. The Android Abolitionist Front, Abdar Corporation, and there's even a Star Empire of Hobgoblins. But these four, the Vescarium, Pact Worlds, Swarm, and Aslanti Star Empire, seem to be the biggest galaxy-changing powers, and the ones that have the most story opportunity behind them. But let me know what you guys think. Was this helpful? Do you want to know more? Should I continue the series? And while you're leaving a comment down below telling me what you think, make sure to like and subscribe. That tells not only me, but also YouTube that you like this kind of content and would like to see more. Until next time, thank you, good luck, and happy gaming!